Stampers. My name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. I'm so glad you could join me today. Uh, I've been working out of the new catalog which goes live in a couple of days, January 5th, uh, 2021. And today I have a thank you card and it's made from one of the celebration stamp sets which is just beautiful. It is called A Touch of Ink. Let's just get started. Here is my card, and let me show you this beautiful stamp set. This is a celebration one, and isn't that gorgeous? It's called A Touch of Ink. I think if I lay it down here, maybe over here, get rid of the glare a bit. Uh, anyway, it's got these two step stamp opportunities for the flower, the leaves, and the hummingbird, and the butterfly. And then it's got a splatter, an individual leaf with a fill-in. And these fill-ins don't match exactly. In fact, they're all a little bit larger than the actual image. And maybe I can show you an example. In messing around with this, I was trying to do something with the bird using this image and in the end I decided I didn't like it. So I went to uh, my blends to do my coloring. The sentiments in here, best wishes, thank you so much. Hope, love, thinking of you, and hello friend. Then I'm also using something else that's new with Stampin' Up! this time. And that is they have come out with their own blending brushes. It's a package of three or four, maybe three, uh, for $12. And they're, they're nicer than the brushes that I had purchased before Stampin' Up! offered them. So I will definitely go in and get more. And I've watched some other people that have used them and they're saying that they really wash up beautifully. Um, and you can really see what color you're putting on them. The other brushes were of a darker bristle, and so you couldn't always tell what color you'd been using. But when the bristles are white, then you know for sure exactly. I'm using the stamp set that I showed you, a touch of ink, and then I'm using Mango Melody, Memento. The uh, blends I'm using, I'll show you as we go along, but basically, it's yellows, um, Calypso Coral, and Mango Malady, and then the blue-greens for my bird. So I'm using Jade, I'm using Bermuda Bay, and Granny Apple. So that's what I'm using. And there's the inside of my card. It's pretty simple and the coloring is very easy. So let me show you what I did to make this card. I am using a Whisper White base, thick Whisper White, eight and a half by five and a half, scored and folded at four and a quarter. Nice burnish on this. Then I have two pieces of jade that just jade that are cut four by five and a quarter, one for the inside, one for the outside, and two pieces of Whisper White that are cut three and three quarters by five, again layering once on the inside and once on the outside. Let's start by doing our stamping. And because I'm coloring in with my blends, I'm doing my outline stamping on um, with uh, memento. So I'm going to do my bird first and I'm going to ink up my bird and this one is photopolymer so we need to be using a pierce mat and our bird if we look at the card sample here is tucked way up in this corner. And if you've ever watched hummingbirds, that's what they do. They hover around and then go in and come out. So that looked very realistic to me. So I'm going to tuck my bird right up in this corner. On that one, I got a little close to the edge. So <laughs> I want to make sure my whole bird is inside the card panel here. 
that I'm stamping. There we go, nice clean image. And then I have my flower. And what I did on this sample is you'll notice that this stamp set really only has one flower. So I stamped this one first and then I created a little mask so I could stamp the other one and I'll show you exactly what I did. Okay, so there's my flower, nice and inked up. And I'm going to put that first one right down here. There we go. Now then, I created a little mask. Where did my mask go? Oh, it's right here. And what I did was I took a little tiny post-it note and I inked up my flower just right up here at the top and I put it on my post-it note. It doesn't have to be um, very good or very complete because it, it really, I'm just using it for masking. So I took a pair of scissors and I went around right up to the stamp line of the flowers here and cut around the flowers and I just need them on this left side uh, because I'm going to be stamping and above the flowers and to the left. So um, I am cutting out my flowers here. It doesn't have to be exact because I'm going to show you a little trick to make sure that it comes out exactly the way you want it. And that is more than enough. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this little mask down on where the flowers are. Oops, I missed a piece. <laughs> and set it so that it's just inside the line. I'm going to show you what I mean. You could cover that line up, but I don't suggest that because even as thin as this paper is, it's going to leave a little mark. I see that piece that I missed. And I'm going to cut that out. It's this little petal here that I need to cover. So this needs to have kind of a rounded top. So I'm going to stick that little piece. <laughs> Easier said than done. When you're cutting out yours, make sure you cut out all the petals. <laughs> I'm going to put this little piece in place right there. Oops, I don't have the sticky part down. Right there. Good enough. All right. Then I'm going to take the rest of this and I'm going to set it right against the flower and then just pull it back, oh, a, a sixteenth of an inch. And that is so that it won't leave a ledge. This, like I said, this paper is very thin, but it still is different than being flat on the paper. So now I'm going to take that same stamp and ink it back up for the top part of this. And in fact, I'm going to wipe off the ink on the stem. I'm going to ink that up again and try to catch only that one part. Okay, now I can set my flowers here so that it will look like it is stamped behind the flowers that we already have down. And you'll see that I've captured enough paper here that the parts that I don't want to show are on my little mask. 
Okay, now I'm going to pull that up and I'll show you the magic of masking. It's just wonderful. And there you go. There it looks like my image is just right behind those other flowers. Let me get this little piece picked up. And there we go. Now, you do this without ink on your fingers and you won't get smudges on your paper. <laughs> and I really should have done my ink blending here, my um, this ahead of time. So all I have to do is just make sure that my black is good and um, dry. I used Mango Melody to create this little background. So we'll see how this works. I'm going to get some ink on my brush and then I'm going to start my blending off the side. That way I won't get any harsh lines and I'm going to come in here and just get this central part of this card with the ink on it and I'm going to have to go back a couple times to get the color the way I want it and always start by brushing off a little bit to the side and that way you won't get any harsh spots. And there we go. There we have our nice background. Okay, now then, that's it for that one. All right, now I'm going to also do my sentiment, which says thank you so much. And I'm going to, in fact, on this one, I think I'm going to make it up just a little bit higher right about there. There we go. All right. And so there is that black stamping done. Now then, what we're going to do is use our blends to get what we want in here. And I started out with my light, um, where'd it go? My light granny apple green on my bird and I covered my bird pretty much with the light granny apple color and it doesn't matter if you get it um, exactly covering completely because we're going to be putting several different colors on here and having another color pick up the intensity is not a problem at all. So I have, oh, I have shaded spruce. That's not what I intended to have at all. I wanted Bermuda Bay. So now I have my um, light Just Jade. So I'm going to add my light Just Jade here to um, some of the places where it's a little bit darker or where they've shown the shading and a little bit on the tail. And then I'm going to use my light Bermuda Bay and I'm going to kind of just go around the edges of my bird. I thought that the Bermuda Bay was just so bright that it would really add. And I see um, these little birds in my own yard sometimes and my favorite are the ones that are these colors. <laughs> so now I'm going to take my light um, granny apple again and blend everything in. There, isn't he pretty? 
<laughs> okay, now on the flowers, what I did was I used Light Daffodil Delight on all of the flowers first. Now you could do pink flowers or purple flowers. You could do whatever you'd like. This was kind of fun for me. I hadn't colored a project in quite a while. Okay, and then I used Light Mango Melody in the centers to darken those centers up a little bit. And then I used a dark Calypso Coral to add that spark of orange peeking out from some of these flower centers. Then I went back to my light, Daffodil Delight, and blended those in. Okay, now the only other coloring that I did, and I waited until I got all of my coloring done, I went back in with my black marker and I re-highlighted these little stamens in the flowers. And in fact, I think in all cases, I, I added an extra one. There we go. I'm gonna add one up here too. All right, and there we go. Now, for the leaves, I just used, um, in fact, I think I was decided I was going to use my dark granny apple on this one. So I'm doing a dark granny apple on the leaves that are here. and Because that matches the bird a little bit better. On this one, I used Old Olive, and it didn't translate all that well. So, um, let's see, I just have this, these two little buds to do here, and I'm going to do those in Dark Mango Melody. There we go. So that is my coloring done. Now then, I did have this splatter, and I was going to use, on this one, I got confused and did it out of several, <laughs> several ink pads. On this one, I really wanted to do this out of Bermuda Bay, because it's such a nice bright color, and stamp off a couple of times, and just add those splatters around gently, a little bit to add a little bit of texture. On my card. And I have to say I'm pretty happy with that. And it's much better than this that looks like it has several different colors. So this is all the Bermuda Bay. All right. So that is the inside of my card. Now, for, or for the outside of my card, pardon me. Now we're going to also do some stamping and coloring on the inside of the card, but it's very minimal. The first thing I'm going to do, um, it's not much different than I did on the front, so I'll speed through this part.
Okay, this card is ready to be assembled. I just need to add a little bit of seal to the back of my card. And add it to the Just Jade. I think that jade is such a pretty color. Here we go. Um, and then this piece is ready to go on the front of my card. There we go. And now the same with this piece. The only other thing I did was I added a few pieces of these 2020 to 2020 two in color enamel dots in the jade and I did add five of them so I'm going to do that again there we go that is my project for the day thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Or you could join my team. The join offer, which is starting January 5th, is $125 worth of product for $99. And then you get five packages of designer series paper. So a pretty good deal. And your minimum to spend is $300 a quarter and your first quarter isn't up until the end of June. So you have a six month runway if you join in January and a five month runway if you join in February to make that first $300. And I always work with my demonstrators to help them develop a plan on exactly how they're going to make that minimum and with a few months to prepare there's lots of things that can be done so um, thank you again so much for stopping by my uh, prize draw for the month of january was won by karen romero here in colorado she lives in littleton so um I put that on my newsletter and that went out yesterday and the prize for January is a bundle of your choice out of the new catalog. And all you have to do to put yourself in the drawing for that is to put an order of any size on my storelbedinger.stampinup.net or you can get to it through my blog www.inkandingenuity.com. Thanks again, and I'll be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye.